my wife's gonna kill me for this, but I've pulled the trigger on what could be the best Timex watch in years. The Galley S1 immediately struck me upon its release back in 2019, with its unique case and classy dial that looked a far cry from the grocery store watches that we're all used to seeing. Unfortunately, it was a no-go for my thin wrist at 41mm. In some ways, I had similar expectations for the Q Timex Vulcan Eye, which was reissued around the same time as the Galley and ended up on my purchase list due to the spectacular dial and smaller diameter. Despite being very cool, that watch ended up having a couple of QC issues, more on that later, and importantly, wore much larger than the 38mm case size suggested, making it a non-keeper for me. Following these disappointments, Timex released a string of uninteresting watches, including several cringe low-quality pieces with giant corporate logos stamped on them. Personally, I've never desired the whole walking billboard look. Within the last month or two, however, they seem to have turned a corner and have pumped out a few models that have piqued my interest. First up was the new Expedition North range, which essentially offers improved, rugged versions of the beloved Timex Weekender. They are very interesting indeed, so subscribe so you don't miss my coverage on those. I also received an email about an even more exciting announcement. The Galley S1 was being re-released in 38mm. <laughs> As far back as the two Marlin reissues in 2017 and 2018 respectively, there was a sticking point regarding the large size disparity. The more faithful hand-wound version came in at a mere 34mm across, making it only preferable for those after a minuscule mid-century look, whilst the modern automatic revision waded in with a much larger 40mm diameter and 13mm thickness that felt a little ungainly for a dress watch. In fact, outside of quartz watches, or those costing upwards of 1,000 quid, there's been surprisingly little competition in this medium-sized dress sector, with the Orient FAG and Sternglass Naus being two little-known exceptions. Therefore, this downsized galley has the potential to gobble up this void, so long as it justifies the steep £425 price tag. Indeed, as one of the most expensive Timex watches ever built, it still has a lot to live up to. We're off to a good start, as the proportions are borderline perfect, with the diameter as advertised, along with a 45.8mm lug-to-lug, and a 12mm thickness that becomes 10mm when the domed crystal is discounted. The nicely curving lugs help complete this compact package that's wearable for a wider variety of wrist sizes than its previous iteration. Some would call this the sweet spot. Despite this, I know there's probably one thing that's drawn you to this video, outside of the catchy title of course. That being the distinctive design language exuding from every orifice of the Galley S1. The brainchild of acclaimed designer and Timex creative chief Giorgio Galli, the injection molded 316L steel case is truly a masterfully crafted work of art, with sweeping skeletonized flanks that spread to form a chamfered window, further revealing a precisely cut inner ribbing that travels the circumference of the housing. The phrase, every frame a painting, is often used to describe beautifully shot movies, and the Galley S1 initially felt like the wristwatch equivalent, looking complex yet majestically formed from almost any perspective. I say almost for a couple of hugely disappointing reasons. The first is what can only be described as a crevice present at the top of the case. Unfortunately, as no other watch reviewers seem to have mentioned such a hole or shown this section of the watch on camera, I can't confirm whether the Galley S1 is supposed to have a gap here, though from the botched rough edges and the far cleaner opposite side that exhibits no visible fissures, I'm forced to conclude that this is some sort of major quality control error. It almost looks like someone's attempted to prise this open with a flat-headed screwdriver. Awful considering that this is one of Timex's most expensive watches. So I emailed Timex customer services to inquire about exchanges and to check whether this was indeed a fault or simply a poorly executed design choice. Here's where the second disappointment comes in. After an initial response where they asked me to reattach my images of the fault, I received no further responses. I chased them up a couple of weeks later, but still heard nothing back. I mentioned early on that I was a wristwatch YouTuber in an attempt to abuse my very niche influencer status to speed up the process. After all, these reviews run on a very tight schedule. Unfortunately, it seems Timex customer services don't even respond to us reviewers. So what chance do you guys have, eh? I finally got some acknowledgement via Twitter, but even then when I did as instructed and messaged them, I got no reply. Seriously, what do I have to do to get a response? I mean, it really is pretty stupid. Additionally, what if you're someone that doesn't have a Twitter account? Do they just stonewall you even more? I can forgive brands for obvious blunders if they deal with them promptly, but this non-existent customer service after spending hundreds is a disgrace. Even random sellers on AliExpress with broken English make more of an effort than this, despite being on the other side of the globe. 
When combined, these issues absolutely put a stain on what is otherwise an incredibly impressive offering. Here's the rundown. Alternating brushed and polished sections adorn the case from top to bottom, with easily the best level of finishing on any Timex watch that I've encountered. Aside from the aforementioned hole, of course, the satin brushing used across the majority of the surfaces looks impressive in both natural and artificial light. And aside from the crevice, I'd say Timex has done a convincing job of replicating that luxury watch feeling when it's in the hands. This is partly down to that glorious green dial that not only presents itself with vigor, but also boasts a skeletonized minute track that reveals a reflective surface beneath at specific angles, transforming the overall appearance in different lighting conditions. A similar effect is created by the high polish Rehort, which almost provides an infinity mirror illusion at circumference, as it reflects the indices and curved dial with excellent clarity. Giorgio opted for a very minimalist approach with both versions of the Galley S1, with slim, faceted markers, a minuscule amount of text, and a simple yet attractive handset. The only extras come in the form of the embedded synthetic ruby above the sixth position and a new black cabochon fixed in the crown. I think that's how to say it, cabochon, Cab cabochon, who knows? While it leans more down the dress route, I think it's definitely more versatile than the likes of the Orient Bambino due to the matte finish and bezel, meaning that certain colors could be pulled off in a more casual setting if required. The rubber strap contributes to these sporty hints with a custom design that echoes the skeletonized case style. Not only does this have optimally shaped quick release tabs that don't dig into your wrist or fingernails, but it also comes kitted out with a unique rivet keeper system, whereby a specially shaped groove secures the end of the strap in place without the need for loose, unsightly keepers. Before receiving the watch, I expected this part to feel out of place given the overall style and cost of the watch. However, in person, it feels like the perfect partner in crime. And while I reckon this watch would look great on other straps, I don't feel like I'm particularly missing out when I've already got this extremely comfortable option pre-fitted. I'm more split on the movement choice. While Timex is back releasing automatic watches again, they're still not producing the movements themselves. Once more, they've dipped into the reserves of Miyota, a Citizen subsidiary, and have opted for the automatic Miyota 9039 as the beating heart of this S1. This Japanese-made high beat rate movement with a 42-hour power reserve is one of Miyota's more premium movements and boasts a slimmer profile over some of the other 9000 series variants when the handset stack is considered. This results in a slim automatic watch that features a nicely sweeping second hand, two factors that undoubtedly influence the classiness of this piece. There is some decoration visible through the exhibition window, though it pales in comparison to the extensive perlage brushing on comparably priced pieces such as the main Hudson, which is offered by a much smaller company. Still, it looks nice and performs well, with the only real downside coming by way of audio. Like with other Miyota automatics, the rotor noise is prominent, perhaps not aided by the lightweight nature of this custom cutout Timex piece, which inherently induces a faster spinning speed. Considering this movement retails for around a quarter of the cost of the whole watch, I think it still makes for a viable choice, though I'd certainly prefer something quieter. The innards are secured to a 580M water resistance level, which is reasonable for this style of watch. As you might expect, the crown also lacks any threading, so I'd generally try and avoid water where possible with this one. The S1 can likely survive being submerged for short durations, though the titanic-like gash in this unit may quickly result in a fatality. The crystal should fare much better, with a double-domed sapphire across the top, that will be impervious to scratches, unless you go at it with a diamond. This is a nice improvement over the basic domed acrylic used in the 40mm Marlin range, and is the expected choice at this price point, so won't earn any bonus points from me. The anti-reflective coating is average, though it doesn't invoke any sort of blue tint, as with some other watches, so it doesn't hinder the aesthetic of this green version. The watch is also available in blue and grey, for those of you wondering. I'll link all options in the video description. As a whole, the Timex Galley invokes emotion in a way that few other non-luxury watches do. First comes frustration, if your watch arrives with a slice through it, but secondly, a wave of awe at what Timex has otherwise created here. This truly is a bold, special watch that makes no attempt to fit in, instead proudly positioning itself as a one-of-a-kind exclusive piece to add to your collection. You just may have to send one or two units back in the process. This radical approach reminds me of that taken by Aviate, whose reviews you can watch on screen right now. Those watches were the bomb. No, literally, they're based on military planes. 